My name is Rachel Klein and I work for the USDA NRCS as a Natural Resource Specialist. And in this video, we're going to answer the question of when can we graze again after this 2024 drought that we've experienced. We've finally gotten a little bit of rain and we're starting to see a lot of green up in our pastures. And this is the question that us as a council has continued to get is I'm seeing green grass, when can I get back out there? And my answer is based on a long-term, big picture, grazing management approach. Getting ahead and staying ahead in our grass production starts now. So the answer to this question is, we wait to graze until after the winter dormancy begins. Uh, some people like to think of this as after the deep or some say a killing frost. But what it comes down to is after that plant has transitioned into its overwintering dormant stage. So throughout this presentation, I'm going to explain the importance of winter preparation for these plants, um, how we can use stockpile grazing to use that mass that's currently out there that we're seeing green and how it's not going to go away. We can just graze it a little bit later and how feeding hay now can equate to less hay needed throughout next year's season. Like I said, getting ahead and staying ahead starts now. As the plants start to sense environmental stressors in that they are now releasing more water than they are taking in, they begin to adapt and enter a form of drought dormancy that begins by conserving what water release and what water loss they have by closing off their stomata. The stomata, as you can see here, are just small openings that the plant uses to exchange gases and also release water um, to help cool itself during the heat of the summer. And another physiological change during this drought stress is upright and curled leaves. So as you can see here, this corn plant, which would be representative of any other type of grass, um, its leaves are beginning to curl inward, as you can see here, and it's a closer, more upright V in between each individual leaf. The plant does this to reduce the amount of surface area in which um, it is exposed to the heat, while also um, retaining more of its water that it is releasing to cool off the plant. It's a more efficient way of utilizing its water and trying to adjust to high temperatures. However, it is very low in productivity. And then as you can see here on the right, this would be an example of a plant under normal growing conditions. Its leaf is very open and broad um, and the V is much more open in being able to intercept the rays from the sunlight. So in addition to these plants conserving um, and trying to lose less of and use less of the water, um, the plants are also going to start reserving their remaining water by sending you know, that water and those nutrients down into the roots, down into storage structures. And this is where you're gonna start to see that browning color as the leaves become no longer photoproductive. But one of the biggest misconceptions during drought dormancy or dormancy in general is that the plant is dying and that is not true. Um, the difference between dormancy and death is that the plant is still viable. Um, it means it's still respiring. The plant is still alive. It is just now living in underground storage organs versus photosynthesizing above ground. And just to quickly illustrate that is that a living plant is able to exchange gases with its environment, which can be done both above and below ground as seen here. So during dorm dormancy, the plant is just surviving below ground. And this is a very effective way for this plant to conserve what nutrients it does have and make them last a lot longer until the conditions become favorable again for growth above ground. So as I just explained, the plant is essentially just patiently waiting for favorable conditions to come back again before it starts to 
translocate its resources back upward above ground again to resume normal growth. And that's why when we do get rain, we do start to see this green up. The plant is now exiting drought dormancy and resuming its normal growth stages. That water is going to move upward back into the leaf blade, allowing it to become photosynthetic again. It's important, however, to understand that we've lost several months worth of growth on this plant that we typically would have because it entered a second dormancy stage during the summer. So yes, our grass is green again. However, it's going to need that fall growth in order to produce its carbon and carbohydrate reserves that it's going to need going into winter dormancy. These reserves are extremely important for winter green up, excuse me, for spring green up coming out of winter because the spring growth is coming from the reserves that have been down in the roots during winter dormancy. So this fall growth that we're receiving now is actually what the plant needs in order to prepare itself to go into winter to then have some reserves, some storage to then shoot up for spring green up next season. So the growth that we're getting now actually equates to the growth we're gonna get next spring to start off next year's grazing season. If we go out there and graze this grass now, yes, we're getting some nutrients for our cows immediately, but we're taking away that plant's ability to protect itself and to create the energy reserves it needs in order to come back next year. So the way that a plant enters winter dormancy is it goes through what we call a hardening off period. As the photoreceptors in the plant's leaves recognize that our daylight is getting shorter and we begin to get colder, frostier nights and mornings, the plant is able to adapt to these triggers and it starts to send its reserves downwards over a period of time. This is a natural progression that the plant is designed to adapt to, but it's not something that happens overnight. And this process is typically finished off by those deep freezes and those deep colder temperatures that we get for a long period of time where the plant now knows that it would be wasting any energy staying above ground. It is officially set to be essentially in a sleep-like state underground in its overwintering storage organs. And this sleep-like rest period allows for cell regeneration and growth in roots and other cells and areas that ordinarily wouldn't get the energy and the attention during the growing period because the energy is going upward in trying to produce leaves to photosynthesize and make the most amount of energy possible for this overwintering stage. And now that it has a rest chance, those otherwise neglected areas of the plant get to strengthen. So this overwintering dormancy period, even though it looks like the plant isn't doing a lot, it is, and it's extremely important to the next year's growth. So now that that plant has hardened off and entered its full dormancy period, that plant has grown to its full potential and used all that it needed out of those leaves. So those leaves are now available for us to come through and graze as stockpiled grass during the winter time. And it's okay to take this old material as it's been finished now, um, coming out in the spring, that plant will actually grow new tillers out from the crown, out from the growing point of that plant. So it's okay for us to take last year's growth as stockpiled grass. And as we bring up this idea of waiting to graze, everybody is concerned that they're losing out on mass that is currently out there. But what's important to understand is that mass hasn't gone anywhere. If we hold off and wait until a later period um, in winter after that plant has hardened off, that mass is still out there. We're just going and grazing it at a different time. And in grazing stockpiled grass, it's just important 
to remember that the same rules apply as in normal grazing. We still want to leave that four inch buffer zone uh, to protect those meristems, to protect that growing point that those new leaves are going to come out of during the spring. And once spring comes around and those growing conditions become favorable again, um, our plant is going to go through the same dormancy exit as it did during the summer. Um, those energy reserves, those carbohydrates, and that carbon is going to equate to rapid growth in the spring when the growing conditions are now favorable again. And the more that we left in the fall is going to equate to the more mass and the faster this growth is going to occur and the faster the recovery is going to happen after we graze it. So this is where it comes all full circle in that that spring green up isn't just coming from nowhere, it's coming from underground. Well, what was underground is coming from that growth that occurred last fall. So in order to stay ahead in the future, you have to start ahead now. So once again, in conclusion, the answer of when can we graze, um, it'd be much preferred to wait until after that plant goes into dormancy once again this winter. That way it has produced all that it needs to get through until next spring's green up. That mass is still going to be there for us to graze this winter as stockpiled grass. It's not going to go anywhere. And in the meantime, that plant has been able to gain what it needs to do for its winter preparation and has done so without being hindered. What growth we do get now this fall is going to equate to exponential amount of growth later over next year's grazing season. If we were to graze it right now, it could potentially result in more hay being needed to be fed next grazing season during the summer and sooner going into the winter. Whereas if we let that plant grow stronger now, it could produce more going into next season and get you much farther next season. We need to observe our grazing management over a long-term big picture perspective. What we take now results in less later, or what we leave now and graze as stockpiled grass could result in much more next grazing season and less hay being needed to be fed next grazing season. Getting ahead starts early, and the results of that will be proven over time.